Hi everyone, it's Bobby from Fifth Avenue Cakes, and today I thought it'd be fun to show a black and white wedding cake with a couple different mediums. So let's begin. For the bottom of the cake, we're going to do a diagonal geometric design. For the center of the cake, we're going to do some dot painting and some pressure piping. And the top of the cake will have a bas relief with a fantasy wafer paper flower that has metallic leaves. As we begin on the bottom section, you will need two pieces of one inch fondant. One cut to about four and a half inches and the other cut to 15 inches, both being an inch wide. You're going to fold it on the half mark of an acrylic ruler so that you create this beautiful puffed fondant piece. Going back and forth on your acrylic ruler, you're going to hit on the inch mark and then come down and hit on the half inch mark. So each one of your folds are a half inch long and an inch wide. Stay within your strip. Once you get to the bottom, wet your fondant again and you're wetting it with water and then wet the other side and come down at an angle. Using a straight edge, just cut away the font excess fondant from the bottom. Then with some small knitting needles, go ahead and bring out those little puffs and cut the top at the 8 or 10 inch mark or wherever you have decided to put your first piece. I will show you once again. I'm laying my four and a half inch top at the 8 and the 10 mark, wetting it with water on my acrylic ruler. Coming down at an angle, starting at the very tip of it, I'll be coming down to the half mark and then coming down to the 1 inch mark. Again to the half and then to the 1 inch. So as you can see, I'm coming down to the 12 and then to the six and a half. Stay with inside that one inch piece. You can always stretch the fondant out when it's, once it's on. If you find that you have gone too far on your strip, gently pull up your fondant and redo that piece. Once you get to the bottom, just come to the corner, leaving just a little piece of fondant. Using either a straight blade or an X-Acto blade, cut that off and then bring out each one of your puffs. and cut off the top. For this purpose, I am putting it on a foam cord board that I've already covered in fondant. My foam cord board is five inches high, so it's gonna come out a little bit short. But I wanted to show you how to do it. So then you're going to wet your foam cord on a diagonal and wet your strip. Turn it around to the back. Place it down as straight as possible. Repeat with the second piece and get it as close as you possibly can to the first piece. You'll continue this all around the cake. For a round cake, you won't need to make shorter pieces. If you're doing a square cake, you will want to shorten the pieces to the length of how your square panel goes. Once they're together, you can either use your knitting needles to bring the pieces out and touching so that you don't have a seam, or you can use the handle of a small brush and make sure that they touch. 
I also chose when I got completely done to use a 199 piping nozzle and to bring down my royal icing with a puff at an angle just to fill in the section of that cake. If you need to add a little water to make sure that those two diagonal puffs hit each other, go right ahead or touch. For the middle tier, we did some dap painting. Find a silhouette that you really like. On this one, I did a bride and a groom. On very fresh fondant that you've just covered with your cake. You can either use tape that's made for cakes and designer stencils has one, or you can use pins you're gonna be covering up with your dots anyway. And trace it with either a Dresden tool or the PME. Um, wheel with the dressing tool on the other end. Be sure to trace every part of your image that is in black or as far as the groom goes, his white collar as well. I chose to pipe in the flowers for my bride so I didn't need to trace those and I chose to pipe in her veil part. Once you have that on you should have an image that is now indented on your fondant. With a very fine paintbrush, I'm using a triple zero and white petal dust mixed with a little bit of Everclear. Start making very small dots all the way around the image. Dot the outside of your image first, and then you can go into the details, such as the gentleman's collar, her hand that's holding the flowers, and her arm. Because it's on black, you might have trouble seeing it. You can go ahead and feel gently, because that is very fresh fondant, for the divot from where you traced. Keep those dots as close as possible. Once you get the image of your outside portion done, go ahead and fill in the details. As I said, such as his collar, her arm, her thumb and her hand. Now you can begin to start dotting on the outside. Stay close for the first couple rounds and stay with white paint or white petal dust. At the moment, I'm just working on another covered foam cord board so that you can see more details of what I'm doing. But if you were doing this on the cake, 
you'd be working directly across from it and not downward. Which actually is a little bit easier. Once you get in the white to where you want it, you can start adding other colors. I chose to add in a gold highlight and a blush pink. For the gold highlight, I'm using a quadruple zero brush, and for the blush pink, I chose to use a double zero. You can stay with the same size brushes if you want, or you can go ahead and move up or down in size. I would not go any bigger than a double zero, though. And now for our wafer paper flowers. Start with your leaves. Just cut out a leaf shape. I used some cutters I had to make my shape. For the first two leaves, you're going to sandwich them together with a tad bit of water. For the rest of the leaves, you're just going to roll the back with a very small amount of water. Remember, wafer paper melts with water, so it'll take you a few times to figure out the right consistency of water to the wafer paper before it starts breaking and melting on you. I am using a 30 gauge wire because I'm going to be painting it gold and I don't want it to be the focal point. I will also be putting the wire into a black cocktail straw that I've already made a hole in my cake for that will go behind the flower. Be sure to make sure that each leaves alternate. That as you go down, you have one leaf going to the right, the next leaf going to the left, right, left, right, left, or left, right, left, right. For the center, start cutting about an inch strip of wafer paper and cut almost up to the top without going through. I would say maybe the width of your pinky nail, depending on how long it is, up to the top. and keep your cuts close together so that you get that fringe look. Then use a little bit of water on the very top and start rolling it super, super tight. You might find that you need to add more water as you go, which is a much better way to do it than if you were to add too much water in the very beginning. Keep your roll nice and even and as tight as possible. Once you get to the bottom, Wet it a little bit more and pinch that bottom tight so that it fans out. Now we're going to be painting those leaves with metallic dust. In order to paint wafer paper to get that bright metallic look, you're going to mix it with a little bit of coconut oil that comes in a spray can. And then brush it on with a flat craft brush. You'll want to spray, because it's in a can, the oil first and then add your dust as to not get dust all over your workstation. I'm using wax paper to lay my leaves on as I paint. It's a little bit messy and you might want to wear gloves. Keep in mind as well that when you are painting that, that paint will never completely dry because you are using fat to put that on with. Now for our leaves, you want to use any shape five petal blossom that you liked. I used an FMN cutter to shape out my leaves and then steam them lightly so that they start to flare inwards. You want to steam them on the side that has more texture and not the sleek side so that your folds bend inward towards, your, towards the center of your flower. As you put on your petals, make sure to alternate it so that the petals are in between the, the slits of each petal, so that you don't have petals overlapping each other without being able to see the behind petals. You can also use a tad bit of water and a pin to help get the shape. I'm adding my petals with royal icing to connect it and then holding a pin in place to make sure they don't fall out. I used three small, three medium, 
too large and too extra large, which you can all get with the FMN color cutters or you can go ahead and graduate it on your printer. I went ahead and printed it on out on my edible printer with edible ink, but if you just have a regular printer, lay the image over your wafer paper and cut it that way. Depending on the size of your cake will depend on how many petals you want on and how big you want your flower to be. This is being done on the top tier which also has bob relief and I've shown you how to do that in a previous cookie which there will, is an image down below for you to hit the link if you need a refresher. Be sure when you take out your pin not to take out your petals with you. For the center, you want to use a fair amount of royal icing and then go back and clean up your royal icing with just a tad bit of a dampened patent brush. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.